when I went to school here, you didn't even know who the principal was. You couldn't even go by the office. You just stayed out of that area. <laughs> now it's, you get to know the kids, all the decisions you make. When I was a, an assistant house master, when I had to make a lot of decisions about suspensions, it was always in the best interest of the kid, not what made it easy for teachers. So I think that started it, the whole tone of the building changed. And when you change the tone, then you can start working on improving academic achievement. This was my march. The purple are the days that I had class not disrupted by standardized testing. Personalization and improving academic achievement through the literacy program. And we haven't varied from those goals in 10 years. The white are all the days that my classes were disrupted by standardized testing. I had some dinosaurs over there when I started. I, came up with, I mean, that didn't, I mean, it was the old roll out the ball and, um, <laughs> You know, and then that's it, and you had nothing to do. I mean, they, you didn't want to, it's connected by the overpass. I don't know if you had a chance to go over there, but the overpass connects. That was the only connection the phys ed department had. <laughs> <laughs> so it was about, <laughs> it, was, it wasn't easy. It was a battle, and it, it took tough conversations. It took some discipline sometimes of teachers to get so, people to do things. It, it was a battle, <coughs> but once it was the first open response. We did the open response. First one we did was an open response across the school. And every department was involved. And we explained how important it was. And then when the results came back the following um, fall that year, um, of the following year, and we saw the improvement in that, in the open response from the kids, that's when everybody got the buy-in. And that's when, you know, even the phys ed teachers said, geez, you know what, I think I made a difference. Now, I know that we've got no child left behind, and we've got a federal government that set, sets rules, and those rules apply to the 10th graders. I want to talk to you about the high-stakes graduation requirement, the retest, and what it does to bilingual students in this school. My colleague here teaches the beginners. Are your beginners going to pass MCAS if they're 10th graders this year? Uh, they can barely write sentences at this point. They, a lot of our time is actually taken to teach them vocabulary that's appropriate for open response and long composition. Whereas a lot of our students come from countries where their educational system is not necessarily on the same level as the American system. The foundation would be that the MEPA should kind of set, 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 it, set a determination of uh, at what point a student should be taking the, the MCAT. Absolutely. Okay. And then that goes out and, you know, that takes care of this. That's okay. the point. You know what? Some things are very basic. It's called expectations. You know, the kids tell the kids what to do. No nonsense stuff here. Here it is, organized. This is what we expect you to do, and so on. And I think Dr. Zach and, and, and all the staffs out here in the last three or four years have taken this. This is probably the best, the best administration team that I have seen since 1968. I've never seen such much caring organization. And a lot of people said to me, well, let's get out, you know, the new people come in, you know what, the new people are great. <laughs> They're fabulous. I think it is it's very important to acknowledge that there are certain areas in the school that are still struggling on the MCAS and student achievement and, you know, the ELL students perhaps and the um, special ed, but I think it is also important also to acknowledge some of the uh, steps that have been taken and the uh, leaps and bounds that um, other <coughs> students have taken in student achievement. Really caring about education. I think in the last four or five years, expectation to academics in this school has been the highest that I've seen since 1971. Successfully going out there, having students who was going to quit music, was going to quit the school. He was the greatest player I've ever had. I hit him in the head a couple of times, not literally because I knew his father. He's a millionaire. Today. He's a millionaire. Not because of playing. And today, uh, ironically, he took me out about two weeks ago, took me out to dinner. He should? Yeah. Well, let me tell you why, because this is what he said. He took out, because as Mr. McCreary says, everything you taught me, everything music taught me and so on, I'm using now in my business. I mean, I've had students come back to me and say, you know, I would not I would have left school. I would have quit school. My friends, uh, my friends laugh because I'll, so I'll say stuff like, my kid's this or my kid's that, and they're like, what are you talking about? Your kids don't do that. I'm like, no, no, my other kids, my kids at school, and they, you know, they, it's, they think it's really funny, and it's, you know, it can't be just about math, English, science, social studies, and I think that's why it's been important that we embed these into the electives. 
they're interested in the content. So if you can put in the literacy or the math skills into the content, it's very important. And you know, I think we do that well. Uh, we have to take in, in, on faith that, that our life work, uh, the energy we put into it, uh, is worthwhile. I think it's a very noble profession. Um, I, I, I absolutely appreciate you giving me some time this morning and the opportunity to, to, to hear from you. And, and um, keep doing good work because you're doing great work.